Choosing the right graphics card for your next gaming PC build is easily one of the most important things to get right. But with so many options to choose from at a range of different prices, what are the best options? Well, in today's video, I'll be walking you through the very best GPUs to buy right now, the very worst cards that you absolutely shouldn't pick up, and providing an update on the current state of the GPU market, what's going on with pricing, what's going on with availability, are things finally improving? Let's dive into it. The Valkyrie V240 and V360 are here, with high-speed pumps for high thermal efficiency, S12 fans which are optimised for radiators, and a 5-year warranty, the V-Series is stacked with features. A 3.5-inch LCD screen sits front and centre, letting you show off key performance metrics at a quick glance, with an epic unboxing experience, great performance, and unique visual design, which round off an awesome package. Learn more at the first links in the description below. I'm going to start with a quick overview on the current state of the GPU market. And for the first time in ages, I've got some good news to share. I shared in my last update that here in the UK and Europe, things have been looking good for a while. But in North America, things finally seem to be improving. The addition of more low-end cards seems to have helped with supply and demand, and we're now seeing MSRP prices give or take appear for the likes of the 5060 and 60 Ti, the 9060 XT, and even cards like the 5070 and 5070 Ti are looking a little more normal. Higher-end cards are sadly still pretty inflated, with ludicrous prices on 5090s, highly inflated prices on 5080s, and AMD's 9070 XT, one of the best cards of the current generation, still suffering from excess demand and not enough supply. But we're seeing signs of the biggest improvement in a while, and rumours that Nvidia might be bringing out a super range of graphics card, yes, new GPUs already, could help supply further and maybe put some people off buying for now. We should also talk about recent developments in the GPU landscape. Nvidia have very recently released this, their brand new RTX 5050, and it's a graphics card that's come under a little bit of fire for a few different reasons, but it does provide an option for those of you potentially on the lower end of the market and should help control pricing on the higher end RTX 5060. I'll be diving into the data and whether or not you should actually buy it. Intel GPU prices also seem to be coming down with that Arc B570 and B580 now facing a little more competition from AMD and Nvidia, and we also recently saw AMD bring out some awesome some driver updates for the RX 9070 XT, which in a number of titles, again, we're going to look at this in some of our testing shortly, the 9070 XT now firmly beating out the 5070 Ti at, of course, a much lower MSRP. On screen in today's video, I am going to be showing both the MSRPs of the cards and the lowest available price that we can find on Newegg. And as always, I'll link latest pricing and availability for Newegg and Amazon in the description below. I also want to take a quick moment to talk about how we test GPUs. I've had a few people ask what our benchmark processes look like, and I'm really kind of nerdily excited to explain. For all of our benchmarking, we use CapFrameX, which actually logs all of the frame rate data and gives us a huge amount of information to play with. We distill this down into an average, a 1% and a 0.1% low. The 1 and 0.1% lows try to give us a more accurate minimum frame rate figure. It's essentially a weighted minimum frame rate that helps to weed out any really anomalous frame rate drops, but shows you where your rough frame frame rate range is going to be. Unfortunately, we can't test everything because we don't have the time, but we do try and have a good mix of esports easier to run titles like Fortnite and Apex and your AAA titles too. For example, the new Indiana Jones, which recently hit our test suite, Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk, Marvel's Rivals and Hogwarts Legacy. We also, of course, do our testing with a fully standardized test rig, which includes 32 gigabytes of memory at 6,000 megahertz and CL30. It includes the same cooler and motherboard and a Ryzen 9800X 3D CPU. Now, in many ways, this combo is slightly imbalanced, but it gives cards like the 5050 the best possible chance of good numbers and allows us to directly compare to other cards. In reality, you're not going to see a huge amount of difference on a card like the 5050. Check out these side-by-sides with a 9800X 3D and a Ryzen 5 9600X. The difference isn't massive, but it gives us a level playing field for all of the GPUs talked about today. Now, of course, you can find more realistic CPU and GPU pairings, in either our best combos videos or our builds where we'll always test with the CPU being shown in the video. So with that in mind, let's start off with the best GPUs and begin with our sub $250 price point. And this is where the video already could start to get kind of controversial. My GPU recommendation for under $250 is this, the RTX 5050. And hear me out, for sub $250, there are two options on the new GPU market, the RTX 5050 and the Intel Arc B570. 
And in our testing of the 50-50, we saw flaws in some titles and scenarios, which I'll come on to, but it generally beat out the ARC B570 for the same price. Now, looking at some of the data at 1080p to begin with, in Alan Wake 2 at 1080p high rasterization, we saw around a four frame per second uplift with the 50-50 versus the B570. Though disappointingly, the 50-50 was a long way behind the 40-60 here. While moving through to Apex Legends at 1080p high, and we saw some great results, 238 FPS from the 50-50, beating out the 4060 and RX 7600 from last gen, which both cost $300 and provided a massive performance uplift over the ARC B570. Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 saw the 5050 beat out the RTX 4060 from last gen and frankly provide the B570 with a pasting 30 FPS more from this than the B570. That's enormous. While Cyberpunk 2077 saw the 5050 and B570 the closest of any of our tests with just one frame per second in it. But the 5050 did still win out. Now the only advantage I can see with the Intel Arc B570 is the VRAM. The B570 is going to give you 10 gigs. This gives you only 8. Now while I have my thoughts on 8 gigs of VRAM in cards like the 5060 and especially 5060 Ti and 9060 XT, I'm going to say something that people aren't going to like. 8 gigabytes is just fine for this GPU. It's aimed at 1080p, it costs $250, it's more than sufficient. Of course I would like if it had 10 or 12 gigs, but I frankly think 8 is fine and I actually think Nvidia made the right call on this occasion. At 1440p the card does start to fall down the rankings and you can see the frame rates just aren't high enough to create a really enjoyable experience. But interestingly enough there are titles where it does beat out the ARC B570 despite its 2 gigabyte VRAM deficit. Some games like Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which have been widely publicized as being sensitive about video memory, just don't work that well on the 5050. In fact, when we tried to boot it at high settings, the game just wouldn't open and we got this error message. Now, if you want to move your spending up to the $300 price bracket, what is it you should buy in that instance? And for me, there are really two options to think about, the RTX 5060 and the AMD Radeon RX 9060 XT, but not this 16 gig model that I'm holding here, the lower end and 8 gigabyte variant. Now both of those come in with an MSRP of 299 which is more than the Intel Arc B580 but both cards are just faster. The B580 received a great reception and if you read its reviews people spoke very highly of it at the time but you have to remember its launch predated that of the RTX 5060 and 9060 XT and although the performance uplift on the 5060 versus 4060 was not as high as what we might have hoped it's been enough to knock back the Arc and make the Nvidia or AMD options the better recommendation. Now looking at some of the data and in Alan Wake 2 at 1080p high the RTX 5060 delivers around 66 frames per second. The 8 gigabyte AMD RX 9060 XT delivers just shy of 90 FPS. While moving through to Apex Legends sees the 5060 deliver a pretty respectable 281 and the 8 gigabyte 9060 XT at just over 290. Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 at 1080p high also sees the 5060 put in a decent result with 109 frames per second all told. The 9060 XT surges ahead with well over that 100 FPS mark. And Cyberpunk at 1080p sees the RTX 5060 deliver a fairly respectable 121 FPS. And the 9060 XT is once again well in the triple digit region. Move up to 1440p and the VRAM limits on these cards start to show with the 5060 and 9060 XT both delivering fairly low low frame rates in Alan Wake 2, when you enable DLSS, FSR and ray tracing, but show better results in easier to run titles like Black Ops 6 Zombies, where the 5060 pulls in 79 FPS on average, and the 9060 XT once again breaks through that 100 FPS barrier. It's for that reason that the 8GB 9060 XT makes the most sense for sub $300. Now with that being said, it is a hard card to recommend, when the 16GB variant is only going to cost you a little bit more, and delivers far more by way of video memory and far less by way of VRAM bottlenecking. But ultimately it doesn't change the fact that for under $300, the 8GB 9060 XT, while slightly flawed, is the best value option. Now thankfully if we move up to the sub $400 price bracket, the 9060 XT 16GB is the card we can talk about. And here AMD perceivably have a much more well-rounded product. And across the board in a range of titles, performance is good. The only area this card falls down to its closest rival, which would be the 16GB 5060 Ti, 
buy. A card that actually costs over $400 is when you turn ray tracing on. Looking at the side by sides in Cyberpunk and you can see the Nvidia result is certainly better. While I'd argue the ray tracing is slightly more pronounced on Nvidia than AMD in Indiana Jones at a slight frame rate disadvantage. And in Alan Wake 2, while frame rates are once again fairly similar, the ray tracing on Nvidia is, I would say, marginally better. But it's a closer difference than what I perhaps would have thought previously. Now, what if you want to spend a little bit more money? We're talking about the sub $500 price bracket. And this is where things get a bit awkward because there isn't really anything other than the 5060 Ti 16 gig with its $429 MSRP, which we've already established you shouldn't buy because you can get the 9060 XT for sub $400. There's nothing else. Now, thankfully, step up to sub $600 and the options start to open up a lot more, particularly with this, the RX 9070. The RX 9070 retails for $549 at MSRP and its bigger brother, the 9070 XT, retails for $599. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, we've got two options to pick from, right? No. Now, as much as I try and give benefit of the doubt when it comes to MSRP, I just can't include the 9070 XT in my recommendations for sub $600 because I've never ever seen it for that price point. Not even on launch, not even at retailers that pride themselves on hidden MSRPs, not even here in the UK where the pricing situation is better. And for that reason, the 9070 XT will have to wait for the next price bracket. Thankfully, the 9070 is a pretty decent card and don't let its on paper $50 difference between it and its bigger brother put you off because this thing is actually very capable in its own right. Now, before looking at the numbers, I should point out this comes in for the same MSRP as the RTX 5070 but unless you're bothered about NVIDIA specific features like multi-frame generation or NVIDIA's version of ray tracing, you shouldn't buy the NVIDIA card. You should buy this instead. In Apex Legends at 1440p high, the RX 9070 pretty much gets to Apex's 300 FPS in-game cap, while the RTX 5070 does fall just a couple of frames per second behind. Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 Zombies sees the RX 9070 clock in a pretty amazing 165 FPS, while the 5070 is resigned down to just under 120 frames per second on average. It should be pointed out that Call of Duty does perform better on AMD cards, so there's a bit of a team red advantage ingrained here. Move through into Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p high rasterization, and the RTX 5070 clocks in a much better result this time, over 100 FPS, but the 9070 still beats it out by around 11 FPS. And in the interest of fairness and balance, while COD was an AMD skewed title, Cyberpunk is arguably slightly better optimized for team green GPUs. Turn on upscaling to quality, be it DLSS or FSR, and ray tracing, which was set to medium, and the gap does close. And although the 9070 still seems on paper to beat out the 5070, as you can see from our side by sides, the RX 9070 provides visually a worse experience. And this is where Nvidia's slightly lower frame rate, but much better visual output, would make the 5070 a recommendable card if you're looking for a team green GPU. Finally, in Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p high, this was with DLSS enabled and FSR enabled but no frame generation. And the 9070 once again surges well into the lead with around about 170 FPS to the RTX 5070's 156 or so. So that's sub $600. What about sub $700? The 9070 XT has to be my recommendation. But as I talked about earlier, the pricing on this card is in many ways kind of deceptive. AMD will blame anybody but themselves for the fact that this card has never been available for MSRP, but it's something I take issue with. Now the latest driver optimization optimizations and updates from AMD are fantastic. And again, that makes the 9070 XT an easy recommendation versus the 5070 Ti. But the gap in recommended pricing between this and the 5070 Ti is actually misleading because in reality, the price is closer together. Now the 9070 XT is an amazing GPU for 1440p gaming and is incredibly capable at 4K too. Looking at the data and you can see at 1440p, the 9070 XT pretty much tops all of our charts while moving through to the higher 4K resolution sees another set of highly respectable results. In Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 Zombies, in Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K high rasterization, and in Marvel's Rivals at 4K high, rounding off a really respectable set of results at this top resolution. In many respects, the 
9070XT shows the immense power of AMD's latest RDNA 4 architecture. The only thing I wish is that they would apply it to higher end cards. Which brings me to my next set of recommendations. GPUs that, well, let's say, cost more than seven or eight hundred dollars. Because there's only two cards, AMD's lineup tops out at the 9070XT, leaving NVIDIA with a free run on their 5080 and 5090 GPUs. Now, broadly speaking, these two cards top every chart that we have, with the 5090 leading the way and the 5080 a little way behind. The 5080 and 5090 have an enormous price difference between them, and as you can see from some of our results, that might not necessarily seem warranted. But where the 5090 excels is on things like video memory and content creation, where the 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory is frankly insane. The 5090 is also going to charge you a premium for that best of the best performance. If you want the absolute highest frame rates, there is no more powerful card than this. Both of these GPUs particularly excel with things like ray tracing, something that has a fairly high performance overhead. But these GPUs, of course, have the horsepower to make it happen. And if I was going to criticize anything on either of these cards, it would be the VRAM on the 5080. With just 16 gigabytes, it feels light. And this is perhaps what spurred rumors of a 5080 Super, which could potentially have 20 or 24 gigs, a much better amount for 4K gaming. Nvidia historically always seemed to go a little bit light on VRAM and always seemed to be criticized for it in media and reviews, but I guess they have the data and they know what sells GPUs, not me. I'll leave latest pricing and availability for all the cards mentioned today in the description below. Do you think I got any of these recommendations right? Do you think I maybe got them wrong? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, get subscribed if you aren't already. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'm going to go and play some games now with all of my graphics cards.